Hello students and welcome back to biology. This course will focus mainly on the cells, but let's look at a broad question. What does it mean to be alive? <sighs> matter is all around us. Matter is the stuff of the world. Um, living things and non-living things are made of matter. The computer, our bodies, the dog, a desk. These things are made of matter and elements. But what separates the living from the non-living? When we look for properties of life, we find a couple major themes. All living things are made of cells. Okay? Our bodies are made of cells. We're made of trillions of cells. Trees are made of cells. Dogs are made of cells. Computers, not made of cells. Um, even uh, small organisms like amoeba are one cell big. We can see some properties of the cell in an amoeba enclosed in a plasma membrane. It has cytoplasm and genetic material. Um, we'll talk more about those parts of a cell later on in this semester. But all living things are made of many cells or are one cell. Um, all living things need energy. They will use and acquire energy in various ways. Plants do a process called photosynthesis where they can convert solar energy to sugar energy. And that chemical sugar energy can be used to drive chemical reactions and it can be converted into other high energy molecules in the cell. That's great for a plant and great for organisms that eat plants. So when we consume a plant, we're consuming energy that the plant has made from energy from the sun. All energy can be traced back to the sun's energy, um, which is a really interesting thing to think about. Even if you're not a, a vegetarian or you eat a lot of meat in your diet, um, if you're consuming meat, the meat that you consumed belonged to an animal that ate plant products eventually. We can trace that line back to the solar energy that was converted through photosynthesis. Um, and we use energy in various ways. Energy can be used to drive cellular um, activity, can be used to make cells move, help cells to reproduce. But on a bigger scale, when we think about our bodies, that energy can be used to help move us around or help us think. Okay, so we need to take in energy as humans to do cellular processes and also organismal processes. Um, all organisms, living things, have information. That information is typically in the form of DNA. DNA is our genetic material, it's our genetic information. Some organisms have a similar molecule containing that information called RNA. They're very similar molecules and the molecules code for everything the cells do and everything the organisms do. So genetic information is present throughout all of life. Computers, even though they can convey information for us, do not have genetic information in the form of DNA or RNA. Um, that information can be passed on from parent to offspring. Replication is another uh, word for reproduction. Organisms uh, as a whole will reproduce and populations will continue through that reproduction. Now keep in mind, not every organism in a population needs to reproduce. Um, if you look around to people you know, some people will have children, some people won't have children, uh, but as a whole, our population is reproducing to sustain itself. So replication is important. It happens even on the cellular level. A cell will reproduce to repair itself and allow an organism to grow. Um, cellular replication is happening all the time in our bodies as our cells get old and die. Think about the inside of your mouth. Your cheeks are lined with these tiny little cells that get scraped off every time you chew food. Those cells need to be replaced very frequently. So cellular replication is happening at a rapid rate inside your mouth. Bone cells also need to be replaced over time. That happens a little more slowly. Cell replication can be quick or slow depending on the type of cell and the type of organism that's doing the replication. And lastly, a theme that we see in life is evolution. Evolution, very simply put, is a change in a population over time. 
Okay. A population is a species of organisms in a certain area. Okay. So we see populations changing over time, and we'll talk more about that um, in this semester and in chapter one. Here's a pretty picture showing some diversity of life. Um, this is plants and animals. Um, nothing to show for the fungi and protists and bacteria that are also all around us. One thing I like about biology is that there is a lot of diversity in living things, but all living things are unified by those themes. All these living things, even though they look differently, have genetic material. They have replication at the cellular level and the organismal level. They're involved in evolution. They're all made of cells and they all need and use energy in various ways. So they look different, but they have a lot of similarities. Even when we get to the cellular level, sometimes it's hard to pick out which organism is which. Here's a picture of a couple cells. Well, more than a couple. That big circle that you see right here is a human egg cell and all the smaller cells with tails called flagella are sperm cells. Okay. This is how we all started off as one fertilized egg cell. Just one of those sperm cells will fertilize the egg cell. Okay. One of the fundamental ideas about biology is the cell theory. Okay. This is taking that first property or theme of life and looking at it a little more closely. The cell theory is a very strong idea in biology. When we use the term theory in science, it's a strongly supported idea. And the cell theory has two parts to it. Um, over time, we've studied cells and studied living things. Biologists have looked at all different types of organisms on the planet and have found that all living things are made of cells. Okay, so that is a property of life. Whenever we find something alive, we can find cells. Another part of the cell theory is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So your body, all those trillions of cells that make you up, started out as a single egg cell that was fertilized by the sperm cell. Okay, That sounds like two cells, but when a sperm fertilizes an egg, it simply sends its genetic material into the egg cell. So the cell, the egg cell, becomes fertilized as one single cell. And that cell will split into two. There's our cellular replication, the two to four, the four to eight, eight to 16. And over time, we end up with trillions of cells. All those cells came from the fertilized egg cell. And it's a really interesting thing to think about. We could even look back in time through evolution and see that all the cells around us today came from early cells way back millions of years ago. Life evolved from cells. Um, this has been studied by many scientists, but most notably, Louis Pasteur. You might have heard of pasteurized milk. Well, that pasteurization gets its name from Louis Pasteur. He did a very early experiment looking at a swan-necked flask. Look in your textbook for a picture of this, and there's also a video link up on Moodle. A swan-necked flask is a glass container with a neck to it, a tube that comes around and curves down and up again. So what Pasteur did was he grew cells in this flask and then he closed off the swan neck with some water. So those cells were in an enclosed container and they had no interaction with the outside environment. Eventually those cells died um, he heated them up, killed the cells, and no new cells generated. Okay. When he did the same experiment and left the neck open, and he heated the cells and killed them all, over time he saw more cells coming because they were able to travel through the swan neck into his nutrient broth. So all the cells must come from pre-existing cells they prove that cells don't spontaneously generate on their own. 